Life of Saint Mary of Egypt Saint Sophronius, the Patriarch of Jerusalem, wrote the biography of this wonderful saint. Once, during Great Lent, a certain priest monk, the Elder Zosimas, withdrew into the wilderness beyond the Jordan, a twenty-day trek. Suddenly, he caught sight of a human being with a withered and naked body, whose hair was as white as snow, and who fled from Zosimas's presence. The elder ran for a long while until this person stopped at a brook and cried out. Abba Zosimas, forgive me for the sake of the Lord. I cannot face you, for I am a naked woman. Zosimus then threw his outer garment to her, which she wrapped around herself and showed him. The elder was frightened upon hearing his name from the mouth of this woman whom he did not know. Following his prolonged insistence, the woman related her life story. She was born in Egypt and at the age of 12, began to live a life of debauchery in Alexandria, where she spent 17 years in this perverted way of life. Driven by the adulterous flame of the flesh, she boarded a boat sailing for Jerusalem one day. Arriving at the holy city, she wanted to enter the church to venerate the honorable cross, but some invisible force prevented her from entering the church. In great fear, she gazed upon the all-holy mother of God icon in the narthex. She prayed that she be allowed to enter the church to venerate the honorable cross while confessing her sinfulness and uncleanness and promising to go wherever the all-pure one would direct her. She was then permitted to enter the church. Having venerated the cross, she went back to the narthex and before the icon, gave thanks to the Mother of God. At that moment, she heard a voice, If you cross over Jordan you will find true peace. Immediately she purchased three loaves of bread and started for the Jordan, arriving there that same evening. The next day she received Holy Communion in the monastery of St. John and crossed the Jordan River. She remained in the wilderness for 48 years in great torment and fear, struggling with passionate thoughts as though with wild beasts. She ate vegetation. After she finished her narrative, Zosimus saw her levitate in the air when she stood for prayer. She begged him to bring her Holy Communion the following year on the shore of the Jordan, where she would then come to receive it. The following year Zosimus arrived with Holy Communion on the coast of the Jordan in the evening. He wondered how the saint would cross the Jordan. Then, in the light of the moon, he saw her approach the river, make the sign of the cross over it, and walk upon the water as though upon dry land. After Zosimus communed with her, she begged him to come to the same brook where they first met the following year. Zosimus came and discovered her lifeless body on that spot. Above her head in the sand was written, Abba Zosimus, bury the body of the humble Mary on this site, render dust to dust. I died on April 1st, the same night of the saving suffering of Christ, after having received communion of the divine mysteries. From this inscription, Zosimus first learned her name and the other wondrous miracle that the previous year, when she received Holy Communion, she arrived that same night at this brook, which took him twenty days to reach. Thus Zosimus buried the body of this remarkable saint, Mary of Egypt. When he returned to the monastery, Zosimus related her life's entire story and the miracles he had witnessed. Thus the Lord knows how to glorify penitent sinners. We commemorate St. Mary on the fifth Sunday of Great Lent. The Church holds her up as an example to the faithful during these days of the fast as a model of repentance. She reposed in about the year 530 AD.